All right. Hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and pipeliner CRM. And today I am joined by Joe Sullivan from Gorilla76, who is in St. Louis, Missouri. How are you doing, Joe? Doing all right, John. Excellent, excellent. And I, as usual, am here in a beautiful, sunny San Diego. Okay, so today we're going to talk about getting the marketing balance right. And we're going to talk about the balance between getting fast results and creating sustainable success. So, um, Joe, just to baseline, I mean, most people would say, well, can I have both? Can I have fast Mm -hmm. results that are also sustainable? Yeah. And, and of course, that's what everybody wants. Right. And um, and the answer isn't always a definitive. No, you can't. But, um, you know, usually there's there's some kind of trade off there. It's you know, there are there's there are things you're going to do that are in the best interest of your business for the long term. Um, and sometimes those things just require patience is the reality. Mm-hmm. Right. Whereas there, there are other decisions you make that are maybe more focused on the short term because of goals you need to hit. Um, but if you're going to put all your your attention there, I guess, then sometimes you're going to maybe make sacrifices for the long term. So that's that's really kind of the idea. Yeah, and so and I guess I mean part of it is today is people. I mean, we live in this strange culture where everybody thinks everything should be instantaneous anyway, right? This short right. I call it the shortcut culture, uh, and so. But the reality of of marketing, right, is that it's there's no number one. There's no silver bullet. There's no quick fix, right? And it tends to be always a mixture of things coming together over a period of time that deliver sustainable success. Yeah, I think that's that's exactly right. It's. Um, you know, the, what you describe as the shortcut, the, sh- um, the shortcut culture, I'm sorry, is really, you know, this idea that I talk about that uh, people have this sort of marketing nearsightedness problem where they're, mm-hmm. they're so focused on the, you know, getting to this result by the end of this month or three months from now that um, it's sort of a clouded vision of, of the bigger picture. So it's not an excuse for not, you know, doing the things to, to get to results sure. quickly, but you got to have that right balance. So what are some of the things that uh, uh, when, when a company is looking at its marketing strategy and its marketing approach, what are some of the things that they should be looking at to see whether they are putting the, they're getting the balance and the mix, right? Sure. So you know the the big one that comes to mind for me is inbound and content marketing, right? And mm-hmm. um, it's you know th- there's kind of I think over the the years there's been this sort of perception created maybe by some of the software companies out there that that push this stuff. Not to name anybody, um, sure. But this idea that you create a bunch of great content, you publish it on your website, and all of a sudden automatically you're getting all this great traffic's going to come in, and there's going to be leads walking in the door left and right, and you know, it, there's just so many variables there that um, the reality is for most organizations, unless you're a company who's, you know, whose authority in the search engines and, and the perception mm-hmm. of your, your business and the authority of your website by the search engines is already in a really great place, it's not going to be quite that simple, right? And so we always, we tend to talk about inbound marketing as the longer term play. There's, there are things you can do f- from an inbound perspective and with content and SEO that can drive results fairly quickly and you look for that low hanging fruit. But the reality is there's, it's not like a, a magic trick where you, you flip this switch and overnight you start driving all this organic traffic. And so I think inbound marketing and, and content and SEO, when you put those things together, is one of the better examples where you're, you're trying to build this long-term sustainable machine um, and it's gonna happen by turning your site into this great source of information and teaching the search engines that it is exactly that. Does that make sense? Yeah, no, 100%. And I think it's a good point because, yeah, without naming names, obviously there, um, there are companies who push the whole inbound thing over, the, over you know, quite a number of years now. And unfortunately, it has had that impact as to where a lot of salespeople have sort of gone, okay, well, apparently everything's inbound nowadays, so I'm going to be sitting over here you let me know when all those leads come in and uh, I'll jump on them. And to your point is you can't develop, uh, a, you, if you have a content marketing and inbound strategy, you can't develop an authority overnight. Plus you have to have some level of, you have to have 
good quality content. And that doesn't come easy either. And I think those are some of the things where people have gotten tripped up a little bit, where they think throwing out any kind of content is good enough. And just having it there, it's like you throw up any kind of content, have it there, and then the leads will come flooding in, which of course we know doesn't work. Yeah, I, yeah, that's exactly right. And, you know, if you think about regardless of your approach, whether you're going inbound, you're going outbound, mm -hmm. you're using paid media, um, you know, you at the center of your marketing strategy is your customer. It's you know, yeah. who is the type of organization we're trying to reach? Who are the buying process influencers inside of those organizations? And, and what are the, the triggers that lead them into the buying process? What are the problems they're experiencing? What are the objectives they're trying to achieve? What are the common questions they have all around all of this stuff? If you can understand that, that becomes the foundation of, of your, your marketing strategy. You, you build content around that. You use it for inbound, which is, um, again, it's, it's not going to happen overnight. But mm -hmm. if, if you're focused on the right people, then the right traffic will follow. But you know, when you think about th the short term, though, you know, that's where I think outbound and, and paid media, when it's done well, have a really important role. That's the fast results side of the equation, right? Because mm -hmm. if we're creating all this really exceptional targeted content that are, that's, you know, it's not promotional in nature, but it's there to help and guide mm -hmm. yeah. your potential customer, why not go get that in the hands of, of people directly too, through direct marketing? Why not use that as opposed to just brand advertising where you're pushing you know, how great you are and why people should buy from you through ads? Why not focus on this really exceptional thought leadership content you're creating for inbound? and use paid media to amplify the reach of that stuff too, right? Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, and again, it, 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 all, uh, it all hinges on you having that good quality content to begin with. Right. But also, um, uh, I, I like what you're saying too about outbound because uh, you know, that has gotten pushed a little bit into the background because people go, oh, you know, outbound doesn't work anymore. It's too hard. And it's much easier to you know, fool yourself into thinking that everything's going to come into you. But the point is, uh, what you're saying is there, if you're creating good, high level quality content aimed at the right target buyer, your inbound will grow over time as, as you develop that authority. But in the meantime, also, you have this great uh, content that people can use for direct outreach. Yep, that's exactly right. And a lot of times that, um, you know, that overlap is is very seamless. It's you know, ultimately, there's a person, there's a type of company you're trying to reach. There are, you know, people, and we work with with uh, mid-sized manufacturing mm -hmm. organizations, for example, where like, you know, we're, we're dealing with um, a lot of engineers, for example, who are seeking technical content and questions around that. Right. And then you've got procurement folks who are mo more focused on pricing and timing and, and all of those things. And often C-suite where they're more interested in long-term cost of ownership and developing partnerships. So, you think about who all those people are, you, you think about the things they care about, and then you develop content that speaks to all of this, that, you know, all of that stuff is going to be relevant. It's just a matter of how it, it winds up in front of people. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and the thing is that uh, most companies, I mean, they can, you know, bring in people obviously to help them, but there's a lot of great expertise that exists within a company that I think people don't do a good job of unlocking. I mean, just because you're maybe not a great writer doesn't mean that you don't have great content in your head that somebody else could extract and turn into something that's meaningful, right? Yes, absolutely. Yeah, and, and there, you know, there's so many ways to get content done these days. And when you go outside your company and have somebody do it for you, frankly, 99% of it's garbage, at least what I see. Mm -hmm. And And this yeah. is coming from somebody who, <laughs> who runs an agency whose output is, is largely content. But the reality is the insights and the expertise, they come from your people. You know, when, when we're helping our clients with this, it's, it's about, you know, helping engineers, salespeople, the people who deeply understand their business, who are in front of customers, you know, regularly, um, in, you know, on site with them, fielding their questions, helping them solve problems. That's that is the expertise. That's that's the the source of all this content. And so, um, I think that the, the really what you know, you need to be doing is leveraging the, um, the knowledge and experience of these people and letting that. If you need somebody's help outside your company to extract the knowledge, as you said, great. If you can do it yourself, great. But that's where it needs to come from. 
Yeah, and I think sometimes people underestimate the knowledge that they have and the 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 insight that they have, because that's what at the end of the day, when we're on the other side of the table as buyers, right? That's the thing that we really really value in 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 a, in, a, in a salesperson or an organization who's engaging with us is that they're bringing us insight from the experiences they have with other people like us other companies like us yeah yeah that's that's exactly right i mean it's it's all yeah. about you know it's it's about your knowledge sharing your knowledge and and earning trust and attention that way um you know before you before you dive in for the hard sell it's you know, I, I always say this, I, I write this and half the content I produce, this line winds up in there somewhere, but nobody cares who you are or what you do until they believe that, you know, you've seen their issues before, that you understand yeah. them, that you've helped other people like them solve those issues. So your knowledge and your expertise needs to be at the forefront of your, your marketing and sales approach as you kind of guide your customer to a solution or your prospect to a solution. Yeah, no, absolutely. And that's what I'm thinking. That's what I'm saying. Like people should like trust themselves a little more about the fact that they actually know a lot more and that's shareable than they think. So what are some other things that as you work with organizations, what are some other things that you see that maybe there are marketing uh, tactics or approaches that are maybe not being used as much as they should be? And they're much more maybe effective still than people think. Yeah, that's a good question. So um, when, when I think about, uh, you know, kind of back to this topic of fast results and sustainable yeah. success, we've talked about content and inbound. Um, and, you know, I think something that at least with my, my audience that I see being kind of underutilized is this idea of if you're making all this great stuff, how do we get it in front of the right people from the right companies? And, and what's so amazing in the last few years to me is how targeted you can get with your paid media approach. So for example, you know, you could dial in on, let's say you're trying to reach, um, I don't know, I'll just use a random example. Um, you know, food manufacturing companies on the Eastern seaboard that are, you know, do 20 to a hundred million a year in business or, or whatever it might be. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, you can dial in on, on people with the job titles of, uh, plant manager and operations manager and um, you know whatever engineer and you could act, you could actually go out there and build a list of, of these organizations um, figure out who the people are the physical people that you need mm -hmm. to reach there you can use LinkedIn or even Facebook people think of Facebook as as more of a B2C approach but the reality is if you're if your customers are are on Facebook, it can be the right place to reach them with an advertising sure. message. So, regardless, you know, you can you dial in so tightly on specific companies, um, you know, through IP targeting and um, and be able to deliver a super targeted message in front of people with these job titles from these types of organizations, and do it in a way that is not um, salesy and not not so promotional, but again, right. these resources that can help them. So. I think there's this paired approach with um, you hear a lot about ABM or account based marketing these days, mm -hmm. but you know targeting these companies and hitting them from from different angles, not in an annoying way, but um, using your resources to to help them and go at them that way. So yeah, and, and it makes sense because uh, I mean it's too often people fall fall. Um, you know, too tempted to the spray and pray approach you know, where you just go big and wide yeah. as opposed to go narrow and, and deep. Uh, but at the end of the day, like, like you said, all of these tools can, you can go narrow and deep that you can identify the right target people, you know, to a pretty granular level nowadays. And if you target the right content at them, it's, it's going to be far more effective. Um, what do you see are some of the, where do you see uh, as some of the, uh, things on the horizon. Where where do you think marketing is going, and what are some of the things that maybe will change going forward? Um, yeah, yeah, that's a great question. Um, you know, I imagine the tools that I've kind of talked about are only going to get better. Um, is yeah. you know, you look at the databases that are being built, just information being collected by you know the big social networks like LinkedIn and Facebook. It it just makes the, the targeting even more possible. Um, you know, there are, uh, you know, when you look at, at ABM or account based marketing software like Terminus, um, or there's, there's one called Influ2 that is kind of doing some similar things. There's, um, you know, 
it's your ability to target specific companies and specific people is, you know, it's getting closer to like one-to-one -one advertising uh, as right. opposed to the masses. So I think you're going to see um, a shift in that direction kind of, you know, continue to happen. I don't know when that sort of caps out mm -hmm. or what the, you know, what the ceiling is really on, on what can happen there, but that's going to keep happening. Um, you know, artificial intelligence is, it's, it's not something I know a ton about yet, but it's, sure. it's, you're hearing more and more about it. And, you know, there are, there are conferences where you can go learn all about, you know, topics related to that. So I think that's something to keep your eye on too. Yeah, no, those are good points. And I definitely think the targeting, um, absolutely. I think it's going to become to the point where it almost feels one-to-one. -one. I mean, it almost feels like that sometimes today. I mean, I personally find um, I have to be careful on Instagram because I find the Instagram ads to be so addictive. Yeah, oh, <laughs> like all yeah. those ones that are served wow. up that I'm always clicking on them going, oh, that looks really good. And then I'm thinking, well, just stop being stupid, move on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I agree with you. Instagram in particular, I don't know. They've, they've got something figured out because... I do click ads inside of Instagram. Yeah. And, and that's actually an interesting point because that's a perfect example. You know, I hear B2B companies saying, well, Facebook and Instagram, that's, that's not so relevant. But the reality is, um, you know, if, you're, if your customer is there, well, they've got a formula figured out to you know, be able to, to target very tightly. And if you can send a, a message that resonates, it would be a good place to hit yeah. someone. So. And, and I think that's also just a, a good point for people to remember is we just, I mean, we have to be careful about um, putting people into boxes and saying like this group of people, um, we just go, we just use this marketing tool for them. Because the reality is like everybody's so spread today that, I mean, you have to kind of hit people from multiple angles because you don't know the one that's going to resonate the best with them. Yep. Yep. You're absolutely right. And, and the beauty of it is you can do everything as a beta test, right? It's, Mm -hmm. you, you try this, this, and this, and you see what gets traction, and then you make adjustments. And yeah. if you just kind of keep running experiments and um, you're running an A-B test, this versus this, take the winner and pit the winner against something else and see what performs better there. And before you know it, you've kind of got a formula that's, that's working. Yeah, absolutely. All right, Joe. Well, um, we're bumping up against the end of our time. But before we go, um, all of Joe's information will be in his bio and all the information about Gorilla 76. So you can um, find out more. But before we go, just if you just like to tell people a little bit more about yourself and what uh, Gorilla 76 does. Yeah, yeah. So we're we position ourselves as an industrial marketing agency. And we essentially help mid sized B2B manufacturers uh, identify, attract, engage, and drive sales with the right people from the right companies. So you can learn more uh, at gorilla76.com. Gorilla spelled like the animal. And I recommend our learning center, gorilla76.com slash learn. Uh, we produce content weekly that is is really all about the stuff we've been talking about today. So um, yeah, and, and there you go. And a great example, as you can say, um, obviously, you have your target market and uh, you know that target market. And that's uh, what we were saying today is like, know your target market, know your target customer, figure out what's important to them and then find the right channels to to market to them. You got it. All right. My name is John Golden, Sales Pop Online, Sales Magazine, Pipeliner CRM. Thanks, Joe. Uh, see you all for another expert interview really soon. Thank you. Thanks, John.